every night, millions of children go to bed hungry and wake up the next morning not knowing if they'll be able to eat. Well, now the White House is stepping in to fight food insecurity. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Erin LeBeau. And I'm Tamsin Fidel. The Biden administration announced that on September 28th, it's holding the first nutrition conference in more than 50 years. The goal? To end hunger by the year 2030. And nutrition expert and founder of Disruptive Nutrition, Carrie Lupoli, is joining us live to talk about the solutions to end the hunger crisis. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, Carrie, so why do you think it's been so long since the White House has held a nutrition conference? Because people are dying and we have to do something about it. We know that nine out of 10 deaths right now are due to a metabolic disease, all related to what we are eating. And in all reality, doctors actually don't have very much training at all in nutrition. This has to be at the forefront because we have to start saving lives. Well, you say that food can be a medicine or a poison. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, it's a little bit of a tricky statement in there because, yes, food can absolutely heal and food can harm us. But sure. as a woman who also had a lot of eating issues as I was growing up, I also looked at food as good or bad and it could have all sorts of power on me. What I really want people to really understand and learn is that food serves our body and food serves our soul and we need both. There has to be a balance, but really food has so much power to be able to heal us in so many ways. So we know that food insecurity is a major issue in the world but here in New York City according to cityharvest.org one and a half million New Yorkers struggle to feed themselves and their families so what does it mean to be food insecure and who is likely impacted you know one of the things that I've done in my life is was I was a teacher before I became a nutritionist I was actually a teacher and a consultant in schools all around the country in mostly disenfranchised communities I saw food insecurity first hand and it means that we don't know where our next meal is coming from, where we don't have access and opportunity to grocery stores that have the foods that we should really be fueling our bodies with. And that's really a problem, especially in, in our inner cities. So what do you think is driving the food insecurity in this country as a whole? Well, I mean, today there's a whole lot of factors since COVID that have added to the problem, but this has been around for generations. And what we really need to understand is that this isn't a new problem. The, the thing is, though, the solution is where I really want us to be focusing in on. When I worked in schools, there were nonprofits and they would often bring to school with kids that were food insecure at McDonald's. And that can't be the solution. We have to be thinking about this differently. Mm -hmm. Okay, so talk a little bit about the impact on families who are food insecure. Are there health risks associated with this? Well, this is the problem because we know, again, food can be medicine or food can be poison. And if the food in these surrounding neighborhoods are all convenience stores, fast food restaurants, and we don't have not only access to, re to the right types of grocery stores and education about what we should really be doing, we are going to see exactly what we're seeing. We are seeing a, just an influx every single year of more and more people dying of metabolic disease. And we are seeing one out of two people with pre-diabetes or diabetes starting now with kids and that is a direct result with how we are fueling our bodies with or without nutritional really you know security there so what are some possible solutions to fix this crisis we're talking about so this conference I think is so important as a former educator I know firsthand how important it is for me to educate my clients I always say when you know you can do and that's what we have to start with, education. There are people out there like me and so many others that understand how to teach this so that we can just be more educated and start to make really good choices for ourselves with what we have in front of us. Because it's not just about food and security. There's a whole population of people that have access to all of the grocery stores and all of these things, and they're still dying too. We have to be able to educate our entire nation and what how we can do better mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. well carrie thank you so much for joining us today thanks for having me all right and to see more of carrie's tips you can visit her website disruptivenutrition.com